When people hear the term negative energy, their minds can go into some pretty crazy places like the scenes of a Hollywood horror movie. But pop culture aside, negative energy is really nothing like what is depicted in movies and it's nothing to be afraid of either. But at the same time, you do want to clear negative energy if it is present because it can wreak havoc on your life. In this video, you're going to learn what negative energy is and how it affects us. Then we're going to go over the seven types of negative energy out there. And then I'll share a simple four step process that you can use to clear negative energy from your life today. Coming up. Hello, beautiful soul. So that intro that you just saw is for my brand new coaching program called Heart Alchemy. It's coming out in the beginning of February. And Heart Alchemy is an eight week coaching program where we're going to have weekly group coaching and healing sessions, as well as weekly video modules that are going to be released customized tools, activations, and so much more. There's a lot going on with Heart Alchemy. So if you're ready to dive in and work with me on a deeper level, if you're ready to accelerate your spiritual awakening, heal major wounds so you can move forward with your life with joy and fulfillment, consider joining us in Heart Alchemy. I'm going to leave links to the Heart Alchemy page in the description box below so you can check it out after watching this video. And you can join the email list also. I'm only going to be releasing Heart Alchemy to that email list. So if you want to join us in February, make sure you're on that list. Now, before I get into the main part of the video and in talking about negative energy, I want to leave a really important side note here. Ding, ding <laughs> before we get into that. And the side note is this, when it comes to negative energy, there are so many distortions and templates and cultural and religious programming that we have on us that basically we have stopped being able to understand the spiritual world in a very more realistic and objective way. Okay. There's just a lot of fear based templating out there. And so what I want to leave here in this side note is before I even start talking about negative energy is I want to leave you with one of my favorite mantras that I'm going to be saying a little bit later on in the video, but I want to repeat it here in the beginning so that you start to really come into your power and understand the spirit world in a different way than maybe what you were templated or programmed to, to understand the spirit world. All right. And here's that mantra. The mantra is there is no energy stronger than me. I love that mantra so much. There's no energy out there stronger than me. <laughs> okay. This is a really beautiful mantra because it starts to disintegrate all of these fear based templatings that we have when it comes to the spirit world. We, you know, not just it's fear based, not just through religion, but also through pop culture. I was using the example of Hollywood movies, but because Hollywood movies are really good at scaring the crap out of us and, but they have distorted the understanding of the spirit world. All right. Now, what I have been taught from my guides since the beginning of my initiation is that there's no war going on between light and dark, evil and good. There's nothing like that going on. Reality is really all based on love. The spirit world is all based on love. <laughs> and this was a really hard lesson for me to, to really learn in the beginning, to, to learn how to see all energy in the universe with love was a hard lesson for me because I was plagued by negative energy when I was a child. And it's in fact, one of the reasons why I closed the door to my spiritual sensitivities for a really long time is because I had been sort of tortured and bothered by negative energy when I was little and it scared me. So I tried to close the door to my spiritual gifts for a really long time. But then my guide slowly started to train me to understand the spirit world all and only with love. It's all love. That's all source energy is. So I wanted to leave this side note here to remove any kind of fear based Hollywood pop culture, religious programming that you have around what negative energy is. 
so that you can start coming into your power. Coming into your power is a really important part of dealing with negative energy and clearing it from your system. All right. So I wanted to leave this side note here. No more fear-based beliefs around negative energy or around the spirit world. No more fear. Come into your power and from a position of power. Now we're going to talk about negative energy. Okay. So on to part one of the video, what is negative energy? Okay. So I have a really simple explanation of negative energy. Negative energy is just an energy that vibrates with a frequency that's lower than your soul resonance. Okay. So negative energy is significantly lower, denser vibration than your original soul essence. And so it doesn't feel very good when you come in contact with that energy because it's so different in vibration from what your original, uh, being vibrates at. All right. So that's one understanding of negative energy, very dense, lower vibrational energy. Another way of seeing negative energy that I also like to give this definition is that negative energy is any type of energy that drains you of your power. That's another great way to look at negative energy, two different definitions, but they're kind of the same, just two different ways of looking at negative energy. All right. The second definition is really important because then you'll start to understand the, the effect, the impact that negative energy has on your life. It drains you of your power. All right. So these are two ways to look at, at negative energy, a little bit different definitions, but all going, you know, reaching the same destination. So what negative energy can do from a vibrational perspective is that if you're inundated with negative energy, if there's negative energy stuck to your energy system, the more and more and more negative energy is stuck to your energy system. What it does is it drags your soul vibration down. Okay. It drags the vibration of your energy system down, 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 because the more negative energy is stuck to you, the more it pulls on your vibration downward. Okay. So that's the effect that it can have on us. It can really create a lot of problems in our lives from anything from, you know, chaotic and toxic situations that end up materializing in our real world in our 3d world as, as a consequence of having all the negative energy in our system, but also within us, negative energy can go to a point where it can actually make our physical body sick. Because as you saw in the definition of it, one of the definitions that I shared, it drains you of your power. Well, my body needs power. It needs vital energy in order to stay healthy and, and well. So there comes a point where my body will, if my body drains more and more power, there's going to come a point where the body won't be able to maintain what's known as the state of homeostasis or internal balance. Okay. So negative energies really can impact you on multiple levels. They really can destroy your life. And so it's important to catch the negative energy and clear it from your system. Sometimes in a daily, in a daily way, I do ne uh, negative energy. I do energy clearing daily as a daily practice. So that may be something that you need to incorporate too, especially initially when you haven't done any of this work and you really want to clean your system out. You may need to do this on a daily level. Now, negative energy tends to affect people who have more fragile or lower vibrational energy systems. Okay. So the lower the person is vibrating at, the more a negative energy comes in and influences their system even more. Okay. So that's an important point to keep in mind here. The higher your vibration goes the higher and higher and higher your vibration goes, the less negative energy has power over you or has the power to affect you. Okay. So the lower your vibration comes down, the more negative energy um, is attracted to you and, and comes in and messes with you more. Okay. And you know, a classic example we have of this is for instance, if you're an alcoholic or a substance abuse user, that there's something that's going to weaken your energy system, the weaker your energy system, the more the negative energy will be attracted to you. Okay. But it doesn't just have to be addiction or alcoholism. It could be something like me having a really negative mindset. I have a really, really negative mindset about myself and about the world. And I just keep thinking those thoughts over and over and over again, that can bring down my vibration. Okay. And we're going to get into the different types of negative energy next, 
but I just wanted to leave this here to say that the lower your vibration, the more negative energy is going to affect you. The higher your vibration, the less negative energy is going to affect you. All right. And so your goal is to move from a lower vibration up, 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 and up where you won't really have to worry about negative energy as that vibration is coming up. Now onto part two of the video, the types of negative energy. So, <laughs> so this one's really cool because sometimes people don't realize that negative energy can present itself in different ways. Um, but no matter what ways negative energy presents itself, it has the same effect on you, which is to bring down your vibration. Okay. And so th there are different types. I'm going to share with you seven of them, seven. It's not that seven are the, the only type of, of a negative energy out there, but it's that these are the types of negative energy that most affect people that I have worked with and in my own life. Right. So I'm going to share those, those seven types. The first type of negative energy that I want to talk about is what's known as negative cords, negative energy cords. Okay. Negative energy cords, energy cords, basically they're not always bad. Okay. That's why I said negative energy cords. So energy cords are basically they're they're, um, an exchange. They're cords that form that circulate energy in and out of you, usually towards someone. Okay. So energy cords are common in relationships between people. So for example, if you're a mother, you have an energy cord with it, with any dependent child, you have an energy cord with that dependent child. And that's a normal energy cord. It's very healthy. Okay. But we can have energy cords with other people, not just with children. We can have energy cords with other people that we're in relationship with. And not all of those energy cords are positive. Ding, ding. <laughs> and that's where the negative energy cord comes in. A negative energy cord is basically a, an energy cord that I have with someone else that does not serve me. <laughs> okay. It's not in my highest good. And usually uh, how this looks like is, this is an energy cord. Another way of saying it does that it's an energy cord that doesn't serve me. Here's another way of saying this. It's an energy cord in which I'm giving more energy than I am receiving. There's a simple way to, to, to see this in a different way. Okay. A positive energy cord is when there's balance in energy. I'm receiving, I'm giving, I'm receiving, I'm giving. That's wonderful. A negative energy cord is when I give, 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 and I'm not receiving anything in return. So negative energy cords, here's a clear example. Negative energy cords are very common. If I'm in a relationship with a narcissist, for instance, and I keep giving, 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 and I don't get anything in return from that person. This is a negative energy cord. And this can be really, really detrimental to my life because as you can see from the energy perspective, I keep giving away my chi, giving away my power, giving, 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 and I'm not getting anything in return, which means that this relationship is going to be very toxic, very imbalanced, and it can lead to a lot of chaos in my life, including me actually getting sick. I've worked with quite a few empaths and sensitive people who've been in long-term relationships with narcissists. And the only reason they finally end that relationship is because they get sick. They actually get sick. They get diagnosed with some catastrophic disease. And it's because they've been in this uh, imbalanced relationship for such a long time that that energy cord has pulled so much energy out of them that their body can't actually stay healthy. So, this is an extreme example, obviously, but just to show you what negative energy cords can do, they're tremendously detrimental to your life. And so it's important for you to start asking yourself, do I have negative energy cords with anyone? And it doesn't have to be as extreme as, as what I just talked about being in a relationship with a narcissist. It could be something as simple as you starting to realize all of the relationships you have in your life and start asking yourself this question. Are my relationships balanced, uh, give and take balanced, give and take. And if the answer is no, then you're identifying right away that you probably have a negative cord with that person. And that's going to be something you're going to have to work on cutting and rebalancing. All right. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later in the video. The second type of negative energy is what's known as negative intentions. Okay. So negative intentions, this could be in the form of spells, curses, uh, black magic kind of stuff where you, where you intend 
harm to another person, okay? That's what a negative intention is. Now, I'm not gonna talk about curses and spells and stuff like that because the black magic stuff, the stuff that we used to do in previous generations and in previous lifetimes where black magic was used a lot, curses were very common, spells were very common, all of that is sort of falling away in this new consciousness, thankfully, that's all exiting. But I left this here because it's not just curses and spells that, that are part of this negative intention. It's any time I intend harm to someone else. And let me tell you, if you're human, you've done this before, raise your hand. <laughs> you have done this before, even if you don't realize I've done this before. When I was unawakened, I didn't know I was doing this. But basically when you look on another person and you wish them to be punished, oh, they're gonna get what they deserve. Oh, karma's a bitch. When you, when you start, if you've noticed you ever doing this, say, let's say someone has hurt you or someone has done something horrible to you and immediately look at that person and you're like, you're gonna get what you deserve. <laughs> At the time, this can seem like a normal reaction, and it is normal to feel anger and betrayed and hurt. If you are hurt by someone or if someone does something horrible to you, it's normal to feel these feelings. But feeling anger and rage and betrayal is very different from then me taking the power of my consciousness and actually, uh, and actually uh, intending harm to another person. It doesn't matter how bad that person is, how horrible they are, how much you think they deserve to be punished for all the horrible things that they've done. This, the, the reason that I'm leaving this here is because we have got to really come into the recognition that as we move into unity consciousness more and more, and as we awaken, we really have to pull back from intending any kind of harm towards another human being because when you realize that you are connected to everything, when you realize this, the moment that you catch yourself intending harm or punishment or whatever, or something negative towards another person, you know that you are in fact poisoning yourself, okay? And in this more ascended energy, that type of energy has severe repercussions because you're activating a karmic loop very quickly, right? So if I intend harm on someone else, guess what? harm is gonna to come to me in some form or another, okay? So these karmic loops are activating very quickly. So the reason that I'm leaving this here is that for us to start coming into our power, realizing and being awakened and realizing that I'm not going to intend anything in the outside environment that I don't want for myself. This is a great rule, <laughs> great, great rule, okay? And and again, it doesn't mean that if something horrible happens to you or if someone does, someone does something horrible to you, it doesn't mean that you're not gonna feel anger or rage and that those things are bad. Those things aren't bad at all, but you can feel and process emotions without intending harm or without wishing that other person gets her karma you see there's a difference here okay so this type of negative energy I wanted to leave it here this can influence a person's life significantly especially if they have more weakened um, energy systems if someone else uh, uh, intends harm to you and your energy system is weakened that energy can be very powerful and negatively affect that person's life okay so I wanted to leave this one here, negative intentions, catch yourself, okay? Catch yourself, look back on your life, catch yourself and say, say to yourself, you know, have I ever wished harm to someone just in my mind? Have I ever done that? Okay, I forgive myself. I now understand that I'm connected to everything and I now understand that I will only put out and intend out in the world what I wish for myself, nothing more, okay? No matter how much I think this person or that person is deserving of being punished or of having bad things happen to them, I'm going to refrain from doing that, from intending harm to others. Okay, so this one is an important one. So, you know, check this out in your life and, and feel if this has ever happened to you. Um, and, and if you can feel that, then we're just gonna dissolve that energy right at this moment, actually. The third type of negative energy is what's known as energy vampires, okay? So this term is used a lot uh, in empath circles, 
because empaths are highly sensitive HSPs, what's called highly sensitive people. They sometimes really do suffer from energy vampires. And so this term is used a lot within those circles. But if you've never, if you've never heard this term before, what an energy vampire is, is basically an energy vampire is someone who is so disconnected from themselves they're so disconnected from their soul, from their heart, from their spiritual being, and from their source. They're so disconnected that they do not believe themselves powerful. They don't know how to get energy other than from taking it from others. Okay. And so that's essentially what, a, what is, a, what an energy vampire is someone who's so disconnected that the only way they think they could get power and energy is through taking it from others. Okay. That's a simple way of seeing an energy vampire. Now, if you're a sensitive or an empath, chances are you've probably attracted one or another at some point in your life. And you know, this is, this is actually really common, really, really common. There's a high percentage of energy vampires out there because energy vampires, they're not the, for the most part, they're not doing this on purpose. They don't even know they're doing this. They're very unconscious to the fact that they're completely disconnected from their source, from their soul and from themselves. They're so unaware of that, that they don't even know that they're sucking energy out of other people. All right. So, so it's not, th these aren't bad people. And here's a ding ding that, that I want to leave on this. It more likely than not, we have all been energy vampires at one phase or another in our life. Okay. So that's, I want to leave this ding ding here so we can be a little bit more compassionate towards the world and towards others. And that is that being an energy vampire, we probably all have been there at some point because whenever I'm in a state of powerlessness, whenever I think I'm small and powerless, the likelihood that I'm going to want to take energy from my outside environment is pretty high because I don't think I'm powerful within myself. So more likely than not you and I for sure have been energy vampires at some point, usually when we're unawakened and we don't even know what we're doing and we have no idea how to connect with ourselves and with our source, the, it, it's pretty high likelihood that I'm going to be an energy vampire, right? A common example of this, uh, just, to, I like to get practical. A common example of this is, you know, that friend, that friend, if you have one of these or have ever had one of these, that friend that only calls you when they have some kind of problem in their lives, <laughs> they only call you and they want to hang out. They want to go out to lunch or they want to go out to coffee because they have a specific challenge or problem in their lives. And then when you go out to coffee with them, they spend the whole time talking about themselves and their problems. And by the time you leave your coffee meeting or your lunch with them, they feel great because they've just dumped all their problems on you and you feel like crap. Why? Because you've just been totally drained of your energy in that interaction, right? So this is a common example of what an energy vampire does. They feel great when they finished having this conversation with you, but it was all about them and you got completely drained from your energy and you left there completely depleted. All right. So this is a common form of negative energy also. And you could see why it's negative because again, it's pulling power out of you. And whenever I lose chi, I start to lose my power. Whenever I lose power, my system weakens and, and I call to me even more negative energy. Now I want to leave a little side note, ding, ding <laughs> side note here for empaths and sensitives, because if you're an empath or a sensitive, you probably have dealt with an energy vampire at one point or another in your life, because energy vampires, they can smell from a mile away, an empath or a sensitive. But here is the side note that I want to leave for you here. And that is that it's not empaths or sensitives that attract energy vampires just because they're sensitive or empathic. The reason they're attracting those energy vampires is because they are disempowered empaths. Ding, ding. They're disempowered empaths. So that means that that's an empath that still hasn't come into their power. They still don't know who they are. They're not able to hold their energy. And so the energy vampire sees that as an easy target. Again, the energy vampire isn't doing this consciously. They don't even know they're doing this, but they can energetically smell weakness in the empath system. And energetically, they just say to themselves, oh, that's an easy way for me to get energy. <laughs> okay. And so I wanted to leave this side note here 
that you won't have a problem with energy vampires when you come into a place of power, all right? So no matter what, even if you're an empath or, or a highly sensitive person, it doesn't mean you're always gonna have problems with energy vampires for the rest of your life. That's not true. I don't have any issues with energy vampires anymore in my life, but I used to have a lot. Okay, and it's and the only thing that's changed here is I've come into my power. I know how to say no. I know how to impose boundaries. I know how to hold my energy. So there's there's nothing that an energy vampire can take from me because I don't allow it, all right? So I wanted to leave this side note here. When you get into an empowered, empathic position, you're going to be totally uh, out of reach of energy vampires. The fourth type of negative energy is a negative mindset. <laughs> So this one is interesting because we don't usually think about this when we think about negative energy. We're usually thinking about negative energy like ghosts or demons or something out there, <laughs> but we don't think about negative energy being able to come from here. But a negative mindset can be so destructive on your energy system because when I have a negative mindset, when my mind is just inundated constantly every day, when my worldview is negative, when I think the world is out to get me, when I think I'm not a good person, I'm not deserving, only crap happens to me, nothing good ever happens to me. I can go on and on and on. But when we have this negative mindset, this significantly lowers the vibration of our overall energy system because the mind is very, very powerful and contributes significantly to the overall vibration of my energy system. So if my mind is polluted with crap all the time, you can be for sure certain that that's going to pull down my energy system and the whole vibration of my energy system is going to decrease. Again, the lower my vibration, the more I attract other types of negative energies to me, all right? So this is an important one because this one is inwardly projected. So this one is, um, this one is very focused on you in the sense that we're gonna to have to purify that mind, make sure that my mindset is more optimistic, that I understand that, you know, bad things happen sometimes in life, but you know, whatever happens, I'm gonna get over it, I'm gonna heal it, and I'm gonna move on because I love life. I live in a benevolent universe. Everything is always working out for me. I'm loved, I'm guided, okay? So this is the mindset you wanna shift into that helps bring your, your vibration up. But a negative mindset, on the other hand, you thinking you're powerless, you're small, bad things always happen to you, you live in a horrible, chaotic universe that doesn't love you, all of these kinds of beliefs, they're gonna be pulling your energy system down. The more your energy system is pulled down, the more you attract to you other types of negative energies that I'm gonna be talking about in this video too. The fifth type of negative energy is ghosts or stuck spirits, okay? So this is where the Hollywood movies get all their material from. <laughs> okay, but again, the stuff that we see in movies about these kinds of hauntings, spirits, all of this kind of stuff that we see in Hollywood movies, it's not very accurate, all right? So I'm gonna give you a little bit more accurate description of what this means. So a ghost or a stuck spirit is mostly a disincarnated human that at the time of their death, their soul energy refused to cross over. Okay, so they remain stuck in the earth plane. And sometimes it, it's not just that the soul energy refuses to cross over, sometimes it's that the person may have had a very traumatic and sudden death, so they don't even know they're dead. And so they just kind of linger, their energy lingers on the earth plane instead of going back to the source. Okay, and so this is, this is actually quite common. It's getting less common because as we evolve, we're also dying and disincarnating with more awareness. And so the more conscious you are at the time of your death, the least likely, the less likely you are to, get, to, to stay earthbound, okay? But there still is a significant amount of souls and stuck spirits here in the earth plane and they can really heavily affect us. So it's important for us to, to start thinking about that and even, even helping to do cleanup. I do that sometimes too. Like sometimes it doesn't happen to me as much, but it used to in my initial phases of my awakening where I could actually feel, and this is definitely true when I was a small child, I was very heavily affected by stuck spirits and that's why I was scared the crap out of me and that's why I wanted nothing to do with spirituality until my awakening is, was, was because of this. But really what, what stuck spirits and, and ghosts, what they do is even if it's a stuck spirit or a ghost of someone that you love, okay, ding, ding. I want to leave this here because I've worked with people before 
where these clients come to me and they miss their family members so much that that intention of missing them so much and wanting them close to them, it actually pulls on their departed loved one's soul's energy down into the earth plane and it keeps them bound. And that's not good for anyone. So even if it's someone you love, if that spirit is bound in the earth plane, you're not doing them a favor and they're not doing you a favor. Okay. So when it comes to having help from the people you love that are on the other side, make sure they're on the other side because that's the only way they can help you. Otherwise you're just dragging each other down. Okay. So I wanted to leave this important side note because I have worked with people who had to, to send that ghost energy, send that, that stuck spirit of a person they loved. They had to, to help them go back to the light. Okay. And that was the way to heal the situation. So this is quite common. Again, nothing for you to be worried about. Usually what happens is these, these soul energies, they're not evil. Like we see in movies, that's not what's going on. What's going on is that soul energy, the reason that it's earthbound. And here's an important note. The reason that that soul energy is earthbound is because it has some level of attachment to the earth plane. So we're talking about, we're not talking about very evolved souls. We're talking about more unevolved souls because the more evolved my soul is, the more I'm going to know how to come out of my body, go to the other side, come back when it's time for a new life. So I'm going to keep doing this. The more evolved my soul is the more asleep unawakened my soul is the, the, the lower, the vibration of my soul. That's when, when I'm going to get stuck in these earth attachments. And that's when the likelihood of me being earthbound can be a bit higher. So we're talking about souls that get stuck in material things. So when you hear about hauntings of homes, usually this is a stuck spirit that had such a huge attachment to that house. They don't want to leave it. Okay. So there's an example. Um, another, another common example is someone who, for example, had a really toxic relationship. Let's say they were an abuser and then they died and the partner that they were abusing, they don't want to let go of that partner. And so they stay stuck to their energy system. All right. These are just some common examples of, of, you know, ghosts and stuck energies. I always consider ghosts and stuck energy, negative energy. Even it doesn't mean that the soul is bad. Uh, what the reason that I'm calling it a negative energy is because the presence of this energy, when they're earthbound, they don't do anything good for us and we don't do anything good for them. Okay. So, so that's why I call it negative energy. So I don't mean to say, you know, that if you have, you know, a dead father or a dead, um, a dead family member that's stuck around that they're bad souls. That's not what I mean at all, but they are negative energy because they're remaining earthbound and the fact that they remain earthbound can affect us negatively and them negatively because they don't go back home. They don't go back to love and light. They're stuck in this earth earthbound consciousness. Okay. So there's another type of negative energy. I'm going to, I'm going to show you how to clear this up. Um, if you can, it's always great for you to participate in the cleansing and the clearing. So if, if you have these sensitivities and you can feel earthbound spirits, uh, close to you, then you're a great candidate to help, you know, send those earthbound, uh, earthbound souls and stuck souls back to the light. It's very easy work. It's not complicated at all but there's another type of negative energy. So let me give you a, a common example here, a practical example of how stuck, uh, spirits or earthbound ghosts affect people heavily. Okay. Cause I said they affect you a lot. They affect you a lot, but let me give you a practical example of what this looks like. And I see this a lot with clients that I've worked with that have had addictions. So here's a practical example. People do not realize why it's so difficult sometimes to heal addiction. All right. One of the reasons that it's difficult to heal addiction is because it's not just the living person that's addicted. It's through their addiction. They have weakened their, their energy system to such a point that they call to them disincarnated souls of people who were addicts when they were alive. And so they've remained earthbound. All they know is addiction. So they stick to the addicts energy system in order to feel that high that the addict is getting. And this isn't talked about as much, but it's known very much to, to shamans. Uh, shamans do a lot of work around this. 
And it, that, that's for you to see how heavily the, a person's life can be affected by these stuck energies. So not only does the addict have to heal his or her own addiction, but he also has to heal and remove all of the disincarnated spirits of addicts that are stuck to their energy system. And that's the only way that they're going to be able to come out of addiction because what ends up happening is if, if those, uh, if those stuck energies continue stuck to their system, the addict is always going to be influenced to seek more, uh, substance or alcohol or whatever. Okay. So I wanted to give you this practical example. We can be heavily affected by these types of energies, so they need to be cleaned up. Okay. The sixth type of negative energy is demons or demonic energy. Okay. So let me leave a ding ding here. <laughs> so you don't freak yourself out, especially if you come from a religious background, because religions have really done a disservice, um, in really scaring us to a point well, that that was the whole point, actually fear-based, uh, thought process. Whenever, whenever you're full of fear, you're easy to control. And that was the agenda with a lot of religions. Okay. So um, so when we look at demons and demonic energy, let me take the whole Hollywood horror movie possession movies out of the picture, clean your mind of that so that we can start looking at demon and demonic energy in a more objective way with love and compassion. I know this can seem totally weird for me to be talking about a demon and love in the same sentence, but this is what my guides have been training me for years to understand that in the spirit world, there is only love. Okay. And I know that this is so counterintuitive to how we're trained, how we're programmed, all our movies, all our religions, what they say about this. So I know it may take a little bit of adjusting, but go with me here. Okay. So demons and demonic energy, demonic energy is nothing more than energy that has chosen to evolve a different way than the path of love and light. Okay. All choices are honored. And so what demonic energy, what ended up happening is as soon as that energy came out of source, ding, ding, you heard what I just said. <laughs> there is nothing that is not source. There is nothing that hasn't come out of source. So the biggest demon that you see in your horror movie also came from God because there is nothing that doesn't come from God. Okay. But as soon as that energy comes out, if it decides to evolve in a different way, other than love and light, it starts to distance itself from the source of all, from love, from creator. The more that it distanced it itself, the more that it distances itself from light, its existence becomes darker and darker and darker. It can't see, it can't remember where it came from. It doesn't know what love is. And so in this darkness, a lot of horrible things can happen. Meaning that, you know, this is where murders happen and violence happens and pillaging happens. The more violence and darkness that happens with this energy, the more separated it becomes from source. That is all that demonic energy is. It's just an energy that's so far away from source, it doesn't even remember where it comes from. Okay. And so this is an objective way to look at demonic energy. Now, demonic energy can be powerful in the sense that it's an energy that all it knows is chaos, fear. Uh, a lot of demonic energy feeds on fear in the same way that those of us that are on the path of light and love, we are fed by love. Demonic energy is fed by fear. Okay. And so it's not a very comfortable existence at all. Um, my guides have always been very, very loving in explaining to me that these energies that choose this kind of darker path, they suffer a lot. And so the evolution for all of us is eventually going to be love. That's all there is. That's all that we're going towards. Okay. But in order for this darker energy to be returned to God, to be returned to the light, we have to emanate love. We have to be that love. Okay. Now demonic energy, they, it can affect your life. This can be powerful energy, but again, nothing for you to be afraid of because like I said, in the beginning of the, of the video, there is no energy out there stronger than me. 
okay? And there's an interesting thing about demonic energy, and that is demonic energy messes with you the more you feel powerless, the more you feel fear-based, the more you think you're small, the more you think you're unworthy. That's when demonic energy can come in and mess with you because demonic energy is just poking at your own weaknesses, okay? So this is an overview of demonic energy, what it is really, taking the drama out of it, taking the Hollywood horror pictures out of it, and seeing it in a more objective way. So the way demonic energy works is it, it can't violate free will. Here's another ding ding, important thing to remember, there's no energy out there that can violate free will. Your guides don't violate free will, that's why they're always waiting for you to give them permission to intercede in your life. If your spirit guides don't violate free will, guess what, that's an indication that nothing can violate free will. Not even demons or demonic energy, they cannot f violate free will, free will is sovereign. So what demonic energy generally does is they tinker. This is the word that my guides gave me. They tinker. They mess with you. They poke at your weaknesses. They start to whisper things in your ear that you're not good enough, that you're never going to be powerful. All of these things that uh, the demonic energy thrives in illusions. Okay. Now, if you don't know anything about tarot, there's a card in the tarot deck that everybody is constantly afraid of, and it's the devil card, <laughs> okay? And the, the, the devil card depicts people who don't know what the devil card is or who have had religious templating, they get freaked out when they see the devil card because they think something horrible is gonna happen. But what the devil card means in traditional tarot is it's all about the illusion of me being bound to something, okay? So the, the tarot card shows this really horrible looking devil and he has two humans chained. And so the humans are just sitting there chained thinking they're stuck. But the meaning of this tarot card is that you're only stuck to that beast looking thing because you want to. <laughs> because the moment that you wake up, that beast can't chain you anymore and the chains are gone, okay? And so the, the devil card in tarot means illusions. It means me being under the illusion that I'm stuck, okay? So there's an important part of what this energy does. Cannot violate your free will, but can certainly tinker. And the more weaknesses you have, the more this little devil energy, the more this little demonic energy will poke at you, okay? But again, you see, I'm giving you a different energy so that you get unplugged from all the crap out there that talks about demonic energy and what it is and how it can affect your life. Now, there are two main ways in which demonic energy can affect you. One way is for people who are unawakened, demonic energy can actually affect them severely because if the person is unawakened, they're living under a lot of illusions and so they're a prime target for demonic energy because they resonate with that, uh, with that, that fear-based consciousness. So a person who's unawakened can very frequently be tinkered with uh, um, a demonic energy and that demonic energy, what it does is it can create more illusions in the person's life so the person continues completely unawakened and stuck in fear-based thoughts. Remember, demonic energy thrives on fear. So the more that a person feels fear, a fear of this, fear of that, and fear of the other, the more the demonic energy is being called because they're vibrating at the same frequency, okay? So that's one way in which demonic energy can affect is usually where it's the most. It affects mostly unawakened people who are completely powerless, who live in total illusion, who don't know who they are. That Those are prime targets for demonic energy. But there's a second, uh, second way in which demonic energy can affect you. This has happened to me quite a few times. And this is when the person has a powerful light working mission. Okay, so there's a lot of us. The likelihood that this may have happened to you since you're watching my videos and resonate with my work can be high also, all right? So I wanna talk about that. So when someone has a powerful light working mission, meaning that this person comes down here to help ascend the consciousness of the planet. Well, if I have a mission to help ascend the consciousness of the planet, what that means is at an energy level, I'm helping other people come out of the slumber of sleepiness, come out of illusions, come out of fear and go into love. Well, if you do that, guess what? 
you're going to be taking away the fear-based energy that demonic energy feeds on. They don't like that. <laughs> and so what happens sometimes is you can actually be attacked by demonic energy when you're on the path of being a powerful healer or a powerful change maker on the planet. When you have a strong mission of helping others awaken and helping others move into love and light, you can be a target for demonic energy sometimes. Now, again, I'm not saying this to frighten you. I'm saying this because if this is you, you can clean it up right away. So I frequently throughout my initiation have had to do this. I could feel demonic energy. It's very sticky. It's very heavy. It feels horrible. And so when I feel it, I just get my incense out or my Palo Santo out. I get a candle out. I invoke my guides and I just say, I clean this energy up in all directions of time now. And I clean it up. Okay. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a little bit. But the point here is that demonic energy can affect unawakened people more, but it can also affect awakened people. If you have a powerful mission of helping others, which you probably do, because that's why you resonate with my videos. I'm helping other healers awaken. I'm helping other awakened people that are then going to continue the domino effect of, of awakening on, on a mass level. All right. So if this happens to you, when you're, when you're awakened and you're going on your mission and suddenly you feel like something is really interfering interfering with your life and it doesn't feel good. That's it. You just burn your little candle. You put some Palo Santo and you say, you know, I clear this energy in all directions of time. I clear this from my system. All right. And again, I'm going to teach you how to do that in a little bit. The seventh type of negative energy is what's known as shadow entities. And this is basically, so shadow entities are less powerful than demonic energy. Demonic energy is more powerful. Uh, shadow entities are less powerful, but they still tinker with you. But usually what shadow entities do is they tinker with you on a lower level grade for longer periods of time, because sometimes you don't notice. Okay. That's the difference between demonic energy and uh, shadow entity is that the demonic energy, you can feel it because it's powerful. It feels so disgusting. Uh, you, you end up thinking thoughts that are completely outside of your, of your normal way of thinking. Cause that's how the shadow realms play with you. They can tinker with thoughts because thoughts are energy. And so if you find yourself like really feeling disgusting, not feeling good, uh, feeling just, just horrible, then it's probably, you're talking about more of a demonic entity, but a shadow entity is more lower grade interference in your life. Again, they cannot violate free will. So they just tinker, they poke, but a shadow entity pokes on a lower level grade. So you don't notice them as much. Okay. So a lot of times what I do and the practice that I do is I just clear every day, just in case there's a shadow entity that I might not be noticing. I just clear anyways. Okay. So I'm aware of their presence, but I just clear them. Whether I have something stuck to me or not, I just do that clearing because the shadow entity, again, shadow entities are energy, just like demonic energy. They're not as further removed from God as demonic energy. So demonic energy is so removed from God that they have totally forgotten who they are and that they come from light and love. They've totally forgotten that. And they're just so far away from the light. They can't even see it. Shadow energy or shadow entities are, they're less removed from God than demonic energy, but they're still, they're still festering in illusion. They're still festering in darkness. They still, um, feed off of fear. And so they're still in that. That's why they're called shadow entities. All right. They still feed off of fear, which means if they feed off of fear, they're not good influences for you. Okay. And so the, this lower grade, uh, interference with your energy system, you may not notice as much. If you're a high sensitive, you can know right away when a shadow entity comes in close proximity with you because your energy will pick it up right away. It feels gross. But if you're not super spiritually sensitive, you may not notice that there's shadow entity interference in your life. So, you know, the best way to do it is to just do a, a daily energy clearing as a part of your energy practice, your daily practice, just do that every day. And just, just keep in mind, you know, I'm clearing all of that. And again, I'm going to show you how to do that in the next part of the video, but this is another type of negative energy that I, I wanted to talk about before getting into part number three. Now to part three of the video, how to clear negative energy. <laughs> 
Okay, so we've talked about these seven different types of negative energy. So th this isn't one size fits all, right? Because these types that I talked about, they're very different. All of them are different. So you, you're gonna have to work differently with depending on what type of negative energy you're dealing with. So for example, if you have a negative mindset, you already know that that's a type of negative energy. And so your work is now going to be on refocusing, rewiring your brain, refocusing your beliefs, learning how to see the world in a more optimistic and expansive way, as opposed to seeing it in a fear-based way. So that's going to be your work. That's a daily thing, right? Because it takes a while for me to rewire my mind, rewire my brain. So you see when dealing with that type of negative energy is going to be different than dealing with a demonic entity, for example. So you're going to have to learn how to customize these tools for yourself, depending on what type of, um, what type of negative energy you're dealing with in your clearing. But I am going to give you a four step process that, that you can use for a lot of the types that we talked about in the previous part of the video. The first step here is the most important one and it's called know thyself. Okay. So in ancient Greek, this is called Gnothiseaton and that this is the inscription that's in the Apollo theater in Greece is literally know thyself. And what this means is you're going to wake up to who you are, beautiful soul, your heritage is you are a stream of source consciousness. You are source consciousness in a body. You are an eternal being. You are so powerful. This is your heritage. This is who you are. You're not some small little victim, powerless thing down here. No, you're not. And so you're waking up, you're knowing yourself and you're waking up to that power. And this is where I had the most significant breakthrough when I was being trained on how to see the various entities in the spirit world. I was being trained to see this with love and my guides told me that in fact, this is what darkness does. Darkness helps us awaken to our power. Ding, ding. And when you see this with love, this is how you realize that this is true. Every time a demonic or shadow entity or, you know, disincarnated spirit or whatever, any type of negative energy that comes to poke at me, all it's doing is it's kind of challenging me into my power. That's what it's doing. Every single time that I'm poked on by shadow entities, if I remain small and small and small, my life is going to stay the same. So literally what negative energy is doing when it pokes at you, when it interferes with your life, what it is asking is, do you know yourself? Do you know how powerful you are? That's literally what's happening. Okay. And so this knowing thyself is a really important part of this path because until you come into your power and you know who you are, negative energy is going to keep influencing you because if you don't know who you are, you're going to keep vibrating in fear <laughs> and that's what they feed on. That's what the shadow realms feeds on. Okay. That's what negative energy feeds on. It feeds on fear. And so the more you emanate fear, the more you're going to, you're going to be attracted to this, to these negative, uh, to this negative energy. The more that you awaken and you know yourself, fear is going to start dwindling. You're going to feel fear less and less and less. You may still feel fear if you're being chased down the street by a mugger or something. Sure. That that's a normal place to feel fear, but you'll stop feeling fear in other areas of your life, especially when it has to do with your power, with your worthiness, with what you're here to do. Okay. So this is the first step in the process. It may take a little while and you know, you may have to practice this day in and day out, sometimes for months, sometimes for years, because it takes a while for us to go from a disempowered victimized consciousness to a really powerful, um, view on ourselves and understanding who we are and what our soul heritage is. But you're going to do this one day at a time. Time, know yourself more each and every day. Remember that mantra, there is no energy stronger than me. And you're going to start to stand in that power more and more and more. The more you do, the less negative energy will be able to influence you. Now you may not realize just how powerful this ability to know myself, to, to stand in my powerful shoes, the powerful spiritual heritage that I come from, that I am a stream of source consciousness. It, it, sometimes it may, you may not notice on an energy level how this could really impact everything, but it can 
Because here's the deal. When I know myself, when I know that I am a stream of source consciousness, that I am so loved, that I am so honored, that I matter, that I'm important down here on earth, that I'm a unique expression of my source. When I start to stand in those shoes, guess what happens? <laughs> I start to respect myself. I start to know how to use no as a complete sentence. <laughs> I start ha ha knowing how to impose boundaries. I start knowing how to say, you know, that's, that's as far as you go. I don't allow myself to be treated that way. This is how I like to be treated. So all of these things happen. Now, if I start to respect myself, you can see right away how negative energy will start to dissolve depending on the types of negative energy that we're talking about. So going back to the practical example of you having a friend that only calls you when they have some kind of stuff going on, they're an energy vampire, they wanna go out to lunch with you, but it's just to, to throw all their problems on you and suck energy out of you, okay? Well, when you awaken to your power, when you know yourself, you will start to self-respect more, which means that the next time that energy vampire calls up and wants to go out to lunch, you're gonna know exactly what to say, you're gonna know exactly how to impose boundaries, you're gonna know how to stay in your power because you love and you respect yourself. And you, when you love and you respect yourself, you know how to say no. <laughs> no is a complete sentence, it can be. Okay. So this is just some, these are just some examples of what happens. You're already healing negative energy by just coming into your power and starting to know yourself. If you have a negative mindset, it'll start to be healed once you know yourself too, because once I awaken to my soul heritage, there's no way that I can keep thinking that I'm small, that I don't deserve, that bad things always happen to me. There's no way because those thoughts are incompatible with my connection to source. And so the negative mindset starts to melt away and in its place I'm going to have a more optimistic outlook on life. So you see just by if you just followed step 1 in the process you were you would already be healing a lot of the negative energies that we talked about in the seven types before. Now on an energy level there are two things, two really important things that happen when you start to come into your power that I want to talk about here uh, so that you remember this next time. Okay? So the first thing is my third chakra, my solar plexus is strong, okay? My solar plexus third chakra is strong. The third chakra is your chakra of personal power and will, okay? The more you start to know yourself, the more you awaken to your soul heritage, that third chakra starts to strengthen itself. And the more that third chakra strengthens itself, the more in your power you are. The stronger your third chakra, the less likely it is that negative energy can mess with you. I'm not gonna go too deep on the third chakra because I've already done a video on that. It was for sensitive people, but it's all about the third chakra. I'm gonna leave links in the description box below if you wanna watch that video after this one and go deep deeper into how to develop that third chakra and personal power. The second thing that happens is your throat chakra is strong. Okay. So this is another byproduct of knowing myself. My throat chakra strengthens. Now what my throat chakra does is when it starts to strengthen, I start to be able to communicate my truth and to stand in my truth, no matter what the consequences. So again, going back to the energy vampire friend, if that energy vampire friend were to call me up and I had a, a strong throat chakra, sure, I may go out to lunch with that person, but I may have a conversation with them that goes something like this. I may say, you know, you only call me, I've noticed that you only call me only when you have problems and, and you want to hash it out with someone. And that really bothers me. You know, I, I really, I desire to have a more balanced relationship with my friends. So I wanted to talk to you about that. You see, this is a gentle way of doing that, but am I or am I not imposing my will by having that conversation with that person? Whereas before I probably wouldn't have. I would have just sat there, let the energy vampire take all my energy and then go home completely drained and then complain the whole day that I had been drained by an energy vampire instead of doing something about it, using that throat chakra, all right? So this is another key thing that happens, strengthening of the throat chakra so that I am not afraid to speak my truth, to speak what I, my needs are so that my outside environment understands that this is my truth and this is what I need and this is what I will not accept anymore from anyone or anything. Step two in the process is conscious intention. Oh my gosh, so powerful. I am so powerful going back to knowing myself and knowing that I am a stream of source consciousness. I am so powerful that what I intend 
starts the process of manifestation. Okay. So conscious intention is very important. When I say to myself, I intend to heal this negative energy right now. I intend to clear this negative energy right now. When I set out that powerful intention, I'm already starting the clearing process by just having a clear and powerful intention. Okay. So a conscious intention, very, very powerful, absolutely crucial. And here's the thing though, this is step two because it's building these steps build on top of each other. Okay. If I just had conscious intention without the step one, without knowing myself and coming into my power, my conscious intention wouldn't be very powerful. Okay. So let me give you an example. If I'm, if I'm sitting surrounded by crystals and a cross and, and some sage, and I'm saying to the universe, it's my intention to clear all the negative energy that's around me, please. <laughs> okay. I'm making, I'm making a joke out of this, but do you, or do you not understand that that person, that energy that I just, that I just embodied to you, that's an energy of fear and energy of powerlessness. So even though the person is consciously intending to heal all the negative energy, they're scared crap. They're scared like crap of the energy. You see, they're fearful of the energy. And so they haven't followed step one. So the conscious intention isn't very powerful because it's coming from a place of powerlessness. That's a totally different consciousness, uh, intention than when I come into my power, I know my spiritual heritage. I know there is no energy stronger than me. I know how powerful powerful I am. And then I say to the universe, I call on my guides to help me please clear this energy, but I clear this energy in all directions of time. Now you see totally different energy, right? So conscious intention is going to be more powerful or less powerful depending on if you've done the work of step one. Okay. So step two, building on step one, conscious intention, absolutely crucial. Step three is to use tools and practices. So you see, you see how I'm following through with these steps. The first two steps have nothing to do with incense or, or Palo Santo or crystals or anything like that. There are no tools involved in the first one. It's just literally the first two steps is literally me coming into my powerful spiritual shoes, knowing my power and starting the healing from there. But then here in step three, yeah, now it's time for us to use tools. Nothing wrong with that using tools and practices, but I'm using those tools and practices from a position of power, not from a position of powerlessness. Okay. So that's important. So what tools and practices do I like to use generally? I like to use sacred smoke. So I use sacred smoke a lot, whether it's incense, Palo Santo, whatever you want to burn, whatever burner you have sage, whatever it is, I like to use sacred smoke as a way to purify and, and clear negative energy. I will also, so I'll usually make a little ceremony or something. So I'll have some sacred smoke. That's all. I always use that to clear. Um, I will invoke my guides. So it's, it's important for me to invoke my guides so that I'm not, I'm not doing this alone. I'm powerful. Yes, but I don't have to do this alone. So I call on powerful guides, especially if I'm dealing with darker energy, like a demonic energy, for instance, I like to call for my guides, especially I like to work with two of them. It doesn't mean you have to work with them, but those, these are the guides that I work with when I'm dealing with heavier uh, negative energy. I'll call on, on Archangel Michael. His symbol is the sword. He works very well. This is a non-denominational uh, Archangel works very well, uh, with helping you cut cords, helping you cut out negative energy works really well. So you can call on that angel. I also like to work with master Saint Germain. Okay. Master Saint Germain is the keeper of the violet flame. What's known as the violet flame, a very powerful spiritual purification flame. And so I'll call on master Saint Germain. I'll call on the, on the, um, on the violet flame angels. And I'll literally just invoke the violet flame and, and it, it's like a fire. So I'll just see my whole system burning. And that's another way that I like to, to purify from negative energy. So I'll call on my guides. I'll invoke my guides. And then what I'll do is I, I like to work with mantras, with prayers, very strong mantras. So after I invoke my guides, um, depending on what energy I'm clearing, I'll say a specific mantra. So if I'm working with demonic interference in my life, I will say, you know, I'll say a powerful mantra. I'll say, I clear this demonic energy in all directions of time now just like that, just something like that. So come up with your own mantras. If I'm dealing with, uh, you know, if I'm dealing with just a, a just a, a dark, uh, like a shadow entity or anything like that, I'll do the same thing. I clear my energy in all directions of the time. I revoke permission for any interference in my energy field. 
I do not give permission for interference in my energy field. So all th these, I'm just giving you examples of different mantras and different statements that I use to reinforce the cleansing. Okay. So that's, that's one of the things that I, that I work with is I, I use the power these powerful mantras along with sacred smoke and with the invocation of my guides to, to start to clear the energy and to do the majority of the work. Then I add a cool thing at the end that sometimes people don't realize, but that's really important. And that is body movement. So I'll usually, I'll either be drumming as I'm doing this, I'll be drumming or I'll put some shamanic drums on, I'll put some music on and I'll start to move my body and dance because what body movement does, you have to remember that clearing energy in order to clear energy, it means I have to circulate energy and what better way to circulate energy than to move this beautiful biological vessel. It gets energy moving. So if you combine body movement, like dancing, uh, moving to the rhythm of drums, that'll start cleansing out the energy even more and even faster. So it, this is a, this is a pro tip for your cleansing, for your cleansing routine, add body movement to it, and that'll clear the energy a lot faster. Then step four of the process and the last step, you don't need to use this every single time with every type of negative energy. Cause again, there are seven types. But I use this last step a lot when it has to do with darker energies, like a demonic energy or a shadow interference, things like that. And what that is, is I'll open a light portal. Okay. This is, this works also really well with disincarnated souls, ghosts, or stuck spirits. Like we talked about, that was one of the types we talked about. And so what I do is I open a light portal because this is the path of love. You see, I don't want to just say, I clear this energy, get this energy away from me and I push it away from me. That's not the most loving thing to do. Okay. Think about it this way. I like to use this example. Let's say that you wake up one day and you look at your driveway. If you have a driveway, if you don't live in an apartment, let's say you have a big driveway and you look at your driveway and it's filled with trash. Something happened overnight. The whole thing is filled with trash. And let's say you grab a broom and you go outside and you just sweep your trash off of your driveway and just sweep it onto the road or sweep it onto your neighbor's driveway. <laughs> okay. What would this do? Your driveway would be clean, but you, you would just be pushing the trash onto somebody else. You see, that's not a loving way to clean trash, right? A loving way to clean trash is I grab the trash and put it, I put it in the, in the trash can so it could be recycled. It could be dealt with, right? So it doesn't affect anyone else. It's the same thing when it comes to these kinds of negative energies, instead of thinking of pushing the negative energy away, what this light portal does, this is the path of love because what you're doing is you're opening a light portal and you are sending that negative energy into that light portal back to God, where it came from, even if it has forgotten. Okay. This works really, really well with disincarnated spirits, stuck spirits. It works well with demonic energy, with, with, uh, with shadow entities, you're going to lovingly send that energy back to God so that, so that that energy remembers where it came from. Okay. And I'll usually do this with a mantra. I'll say something like, you know, as I open the light portal and I just visually open that light portal, I invoke a light portal in the room that I'm standing in. And I will say to the energy, you know, may you go towards the light. May you find the love that you deserve. May you know thyself. I just say things like that, you know, may you just find your way back home. And I send them into the light portal back to source energy. You see, this is the loving way to do when dealing with negative energy. It's cleaning it from yourself, but also sending it back to the source that it came from so that it could return to love and light. So that was a simple four step process for helping you clear negative energy. I have a couple more videos though for you. If you want to learn other practices, there's one video I did on specific clearing techniques that I use every day. So you can go deeper into that. I'll leave links to that video in the description box below. And there's another one that I did a video on how you don't need to protect yourself. It's kind of a continuation of this, of this understanding, how you do not need to protect yourself because you're not a little victim. <laughs> and so I gave you a, uh, I give a strategy in this video on what you should do instead, instead of thinking that you need to protect yourself. So I'm going to leave links to that video in the description box below so you can watch after this one. All right, beautiful soul. Now I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments below, what type of negative energy do you feel like is affecting your life? If any, let me know in the comments below.
Click here to subscribe to my email list or head over to my website and learn about heart alchemy and join the email list. And don't forget these videos that I talked about in this one. This is great continuation for your viewing. All right, beautiful soul, I love you. I'm out.